Here's Kavis Reed, who suffered his first CFL loss year last year as a head coach after an Eskimo 5-0 start, looking for the first Eskimo sweep of the Bombers since 2005. Well, one guy who could be key in that sweep. He's been a stud over the last couple for the Edmonton Eskimos. Hugh Charles, 375 yards from scrimmage over the last two weeks. One of the guys looking to shut him and the rest of that Edmonton offense down. Bryant Turner leads the team with five sacks, including two against Edmonton in week three. All that police has stressed this week to his team. Just because it is a home game doesn't mean you're automatically going to win it. And that graphic showed you that last year in a successful season, the Bombers were only 5-4 and four on home turf. But always a good vibe here, and that should help a team looking for its first win of the year. Justin Pilardi gets set to kick it off. And we are underway with Joe Burnett and Hugh Charles deep. And this is Burnett from inside his 10. On the return, and he gets cracked down by Pierre Luc Lebeau. Of the injured Simeon Rotier. And our standards to watch, brought to you by Rona, proud sponsor of the Canadian Football League. And it's 18. Stephen Giles goes to work. Early pressure, and Giles gets away initially. And he'll throw it away wisely. Avoiding what would have been about a 15 or 20 yard loss. Sure, along with Bryant Turner, who we'll talk a lot about tonight. He has been a dominant player at defensive tackle in the CFL in the opening four weeks. Second and ten. Guys left the far side. There's Stamps to catch. But will not have the first down. Brought down by DeMond Washington. Looks like a gain of eight for Stamps, who had some drops as the guys talked about. And Washington awaits. Deals kicking into the wind in the opening quarter. Short kick and on a couple of hops. Washington gets it to the outside, but a flag down. As he's tripped up around the 47 yard line, likely to be coming back. Looking for better first down production, but already second and long. But pulls it down, takes off, and will have a first down. Second and six, Simpson releases. He's got the ball, and another first down. Paul Police mentioned yesterday he thinks Simpson's one of the best backs he's had as a receiver. Mike Bruneau, high kick. And there's going to be a first possession point <laughs> on the boot. A signal for Renault, a 57-yard blast. Bombers strike first. Bombers coaching offices, and I'm not sure any assistant coach has ever made a bigger impact in the Canadian Football League than Richard Harris. An emotional day for Paul Apelis and for Camus Reed, who was a, on a coaching staff with Richard Harris. Stephen Giles had a slip on his hand, picks it up, and now it'll be caught down by DeMond Washington, back up the 30-yard line, Washington, six yards a punt. Short kick for here, and a back spin, and Diaz has got a shot at it, he's on it, near midfield, it's Eskimo football, unless another Edmonton Eskimo was within five yards. We give Burkdale's a hard time, but the fact is, that's exactly the reaction you want when the ball comes off your foot the wrong way. No hesitation, he just took off downfield. The Eskimo stay on the field at the bottom of 53. Here's Charles, and he gets mugged in the hole and driven back. It was one of his strengths last season. That's one of the things missing in this 0-4 start. Second and 18, Kuhorn back to the original line of scrimmage where he's met by Johnny Sears. Second and five. Went to the wide side, and the pitch is made there again by Watson. He's been a go-to guy already, his third catch. And it's another bomber first down. On his third carry in the CFL. Second and eight. Quick over the middle. Watson again. A first down conversion. Doyle out. 
to Donovan Alexander makes the tackle. And Alex Briggs been on his game early. Well, maybe he just missed Corey Watson. Same story in Winnipeg. Screen play. Simpson back in. Fumbles the football. Who's got it? Edmonton Eskimos have the ball as Simpson limps to the sidelines. It's a takeaway by that defense as Simone Lawrence. Bryant Turner. That's a loss of three. Second and 13. And this time, moving on that defensive line. Let's find out if they were drawn. Of an end, but he's stout enough to play inside a tackle. He creates a mismatch for a lot of guards. And now second and eight. Guys out of the shotgun, downfield, and overshoots the intended target, Nate Kuhorn. Mike Renault. Line drive boot, good one into the wind, and Joe Burnett comes across, fumbles the football. And are the Bombers on it, or did the Eskimos get it back? And Edmonton does retain possession of the football. Kerry Cope. Yeah, absolutely. Determined to be better. Yeah, and he knows he's got to be better at it. Seems like every week the Eskimos come in trying to get the ball in Fred Stamps' hands one way or another early in the game. But as the game goes on, he seems to get forgotten a little bit. Dallas gets the ball and taken down. Huge pressure off the edge. Alex Hall once again. Settling in at the 25, and here's Washington. Got to get outside. Might have to pull it. Demond Washington could have got up. Demond Washington thought he was still back in the NCAA where once anything other than your hands or feet touch, you're down. And well, which offense gets it going first. Steven Giles starts at the 41. Play action with Charles, went deep. And now underneath, he's got Kuhorn wide open. And Nate Kuhorn's down to the bottom of the 40-yard line. Also in the mix, playing several snaps every day. Five bombers who started week one on defense on the injury list. Second down, Giles guns it deep, looking for stamps. Made the catch, but did not get a foot down. Incomplete. 45-yarder, but a man on side. Shaw boots it and puts it through. So Grant Shaw now 11 for 13 on the year. And that his longest of the season, a 45-yarder, now four for five. Oh, no! <laughs> the just gets it away, and this is intercepted. The Edmonton Eskimos have the football, picked off by Ronnie Prune, his first CFL interception, the man replacing Weldon Brown. Making up that number 17. Incomplete, trying to hit Kerry Coke, and Stephen Giles got rocked. Well, we've seen Alex Hall over the course of the last two weeks. Instead, it's a deep start for the Bombers. And a good run here by Chad Simpson, which makes the decision by Washington a lot better. Yeah, Chad Simpson bailed out his buddy here, but big part of Watson's game. 15-yard run for Simpson, a game of all again. Through a tackle and has another first down. I mentioned 91 yards last week. He also had a 30-yard run called back on an offside. Struggling <laughs> mightily last week. Let's see if they get a conversion. And that one was intercepted. Donovan Alexander, the safety, comes up with that again. Eskimo pressure forcing a turnover. It's the third of this opening half. Interception of the Winnipeg native Donovan Alexander. Gives the Eskimos a first down in Bomber territory. Fred Stamps takes a heavy, heavy hit as he gets blasted by Johnny Sears. Ten-yard run for Charles, a first down for the Eskimos. Giles sets up, looks deep, has an open man. Touchdown, Kerry Coke, who 
scored a touchdown against the Bombers at Commonwealth Stadium. He's got another, a 25-yard touchdown strike. A uh, great ball there from Steven Giles. Alex Brink 0 for his last seven with those two interceptions. Nice, Tito Pueblo. It's a first down, and maybe more. Hunter Stilgren. Up to the 48-yard line. Had a tough coach yesterday. Wants to be more involved, and La Police told him to stay with it. Well, if he keeps making plays like that, they won't be able to help but keep him involved. 40. Takes to Simpson, looks down field, turns, and he gets drilled, but holds on. And the Eskimo 44, sure, it make him pay, but the veteran makes the catch in an 18-yard pickup. Watson for four, second and six, six men go out. And Burke steps up, and he'll take off, and he'll get a first down. And gets a few extra before he ducks out. And that ignites the fans. Well, the Bombers suddenly on this series have life. Can they extend this impressive drive? Second and ten. Pass inside and cut down on the play is Denmark. Short of the first down. Pilardi from 26 yards up. He is good. He's 11 for 12 on the season. He felt like he was running into the coverage of another defender if he continued across. Well, this is what you get with home field. There's making noise. Oh, makes the catch and a clutch one. Should be a first down. 25 out. Matt Nichols, the holder. And no damage done. They put it through once again. And it is a 10-point lead. And again, temper starting to flare here. <laughs> Trying to get it a little bit closer than that. Got to be quick. Runs out of time, so he'll shoot long for Matthews. The ball and wide. Does he have this? Runs out of time, so he'll shoot long for Matthews. The ball and wide. Does he have this? from a Winnipeg Blue Bomber perspective, except the ending. Why take three when you can get seven? And they stay two back with McCarty and Charles, both releasing. Giles downfield, wide open. Touchdown, Fred Stamps has his first of the year. That well, was Kerry Coke jumped on him in celebration. I think a monkey just jumped off his back. Doesn't mean you have to go airborne. Well, they go to him on second and fourth, and he's got the first and more. And J.C. Sharon chocks up another tackle, but this is up beyond the 50-yard line. It's a 16-yard gain for Simpson, who is gaining some momentum of his own in this game. Oh, the faint possibility. And now looks for the corner. It's a bounce. And here's the net. Game tackle before he reaches the 20 yard line. LaBay leading the surge downfield. And Hort Harmon is eighth tackle of the game. Just another night at the office. There's a pass for Big Matthews. He's got it. And where will forward progress be ruled here as Chris Thompson wrestled him down close to a first down? Big to Simpson. Rick was pretty downfield and has a strength to Clarence Denmark. Taken down by Ronnie Cruz, but that's a, another corner first down into Edmonton territory at the 45-17 for Denmark. Well, when they get rolling, this Winnipeg Blue Bomber offense. Bombers no huddle, quarterback drop, opens up. That's first down inside the 30-yard line. 13 for Brink. Well, Alex Brink in attack mode. Pressure picked up, and now he's in trouble with Rock. Way back at the 50, there's Sean Levin Munoz on the blitz. And they get home for a big loss. Pressure on the no, and they block the kick. 
Boris Lewison, who picked up. And they're going to face Postal first down. Is that Jeremy McGee who comes up with the ball? And beyond the line of scrimmage, Winnipeg will maintain possession, I believe. Here comes Heat again, but they get it in the hands of Simpson. And Simpson sets up first and goal. Uh, and Alex Brink sacrifices to make this play. Brink out of shotgun with Simpson in behind. Perry walks in the block. Simpson, touchdown. Five for number five in his first Canadian Football League touchdown. Chad Simpson. Things opened up here. Keep an eye on the center. And that'll cue the crowd here in Winnipeg. First down for Edmonton at the 10. No official word on attendance. Very close to a summer. Which would be the eighth consecutive here in Winnipeg. I don't think the swag is back yet, Chris, but the noise sure is. So Jonathan have me doing his part. Get this place rocking. And the Eskimos have practiced the silent cap, getting ready for this. See how they do. from the middle of your screen, number 96. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I don't think initial contact is on the head either. That's going to break. Now the real estate. Now Charles trying to get outside. And he gets two, maybe three. Hit by Hall and LeBay. Looks like Hall's first contact was around the shoulders. McCarty and Charles in the backfield. Flags down and the play doesn't get off. Last year, we saw the combination of a very active defense and a very loud crowd here, creating confusion for offenses. Prior to the 22nd clock running out, Edmonton called a timeout. So that avoids the penalty. And it remains second and seven. And it remains loud. to the final play of the third quarter. Here comes pressure. They dump it off. Charles the pitch. Javon Johnson couldn't bring it down, but the game tackle rally to the football at the 30. And stop Charles short. It and now
now the yes or uh, the infantess most will start at their own five yard line a precarious three-point lead for stephen giles and company Let's to the out watch shamad chambers who has the catch the washington awaiting at the edmonton 50. and dale fakes and now we'll go for a run He'll just get pushed out. So it is two. And before last week, it's that over the middle. It's caught. And look out. Curtis Denmark. But it's coming back. There is a flag down. And Denmark brought down inside the five. But a penalty is going to negate one of the biggest plays of the night. And Damaso Munoz is down and getting attention for the Edmonton Eskimos. Joe Burnett drops back. Good kick by Renault and a bounce that is misplayed and booted out by Burnett to help preserve Calgary's great cup victory. Yeah, but the rule in here is more to put him in the foot rather than he kicked it out of bounds. So no change of possession. Inadvertent, but the Eskimos are backed up and Keith Charles wants to change that with a good run as he bounces off contact for eight. Hand cut, or maybe foot cut. Edmonton stays with the football. Second and two. Maybe shorter than that as Charles ran out of real estate. He lost yards. Certainly didn't get to the first down. Short drop, good hitter, first down. Let's take another look. Yeah, we'll have another look here. Great execution there on second down. That one looked okay too, didn't it? It did. It did. It looked like Prude grabbed underneath the shoulder pads. So I initially wondered about a horsepower. First down draw, Chad Simpson. And he is wrapped and pushed back down close to the 35-yard line. Has a big second down play here. Great over the middle and uh, third forward enough for the first down and Corey Watson continues to make an impact 12 and 13 and the bottom half the lead lots of time left though Lead of the night is a monster. Can't bring it in. Oh, what a break to that football by Hefty. <laughs> Very close, the intended target. So is Giles. Not quite field goal range. Well, they might try it from outside 50 with Shaw, but Tim Burke wants a stop, and Stephen Giles wants a few more. Flags down, and the play not off. And did they get the play snapped in time? Zeroes on the on the play clock. save one of those here in the second half. Yeah, dealing with that noise earlier. In the third quarter of this football game, the Eskimos had to burn a timeout to avoid a time count. First down, but it looks like this is coming back. Yeah, it looked like Alex Hall 
Defensive end for Winnipeg got held on the play. Hall's had his best game. Absolutely. Well, what do you have on second and 20? Stephen Giles. The early movement there, and the flag does fly. Giles gets away from the initial person. Has a free play here, and incomplete. What a two-horn over the middle. It's good to be back in Winnipeg. We waited a month to get here. But the atmosphere is what we've grown to get used to here. Hasn't made these fans any less enthusiastic. Giles trying to tie them. Steps up, takes off. And Stephen Giles is met by Hickney short of the first down at the 45 yard line. And does Kevis Reed send out Grant Shaw or not? The Eskimos right now, the field position is they want to put this game in the hands of the defense that has been their strength all season long. The two-point lead. Gales looks for the corner. And he's going to, or is he going to keep it in play? It gets a great decision. Bounce, and Javon Johnson played it perfectly. Not what Burke Dales wanted. Well, I notice Demond Washington's the guy who's been back on most of the punts in this ball game. See Steve Morley back in at right guard. And off Simpson. And Simpson plows for close to seven. Back to Simpson. He will get it. Big stop. Bombers still struggling with those turnovers, but find themselves on the brink of their first win. Alex Burke. Of course, a 300 yards passer. And he's going to go on their feet of Ken Williams. Right now, John of the Earth. Terry Cope, the catch. Trying to get out of bounds. Well, that moves it up to the 30 snail guard. Giles gets it away over the middle. And a big catch is made there, or does it? Terry Cope. And now they're ruling incomplete. Center will review it. Let replay. Even the head coach wants noise and calls for it. Second and ten. Defensive lineman should have a breakthrough game. Down to a single play, they need 10. Giles has a big two horn. Has a big first down across midfield with exactly a minute to go. The second year re receiver can get a win here. as Steven Giles took off with that football and cut back to the inside. A badly needed win. It's okay, Paul, you can exhale. A bye week for the Eskimos, another home game next week for Winnipeg against Montreal. Well, 
Welcome home, Bombers. What a battle tonight.